Hello everyone out there on YouTube, is I the American E2 shining on? And today, I'm here to review everything I bought during my vacation. So in the last week of June, after I made that little review on Bachman Bow, I went on vacation with my family to Calvert Cliffs, and during this time we came across a small train store which had a couple of trains, and a thrift store which had some old stuff like clothes, DVDs, electronics, etc. And they also had some old toys, including a few Thomas toys. So I went ahead and bought a few things, and I thought I'd go ahead and show them all off one by one. So, let's take a look. So, to start things off, we'll take a look at some of the things that are more firm condition. First, we have four take-along models of Bill, Ben, and two solar fuel tankers, all which cost $25. Looking at these four models, they have definitely seen better days. They got quite a few paint chips here and there, details such as the nameplates and roofs have peeled off, and for some reason, Bill has this little spot of black on his face, making him look like he's got a goatee for some reason. Next, here's a wooden railway garbage car, which cost $16. There's not much to say about this little wagon, as it's just basically a red open wagon, but compared to the take-along models, it's pretty much in a really good condition, and has a nice print-on garbage load. Moving on to the first pieces of model trains, we have a green and yellow Beeline Service EMD SD45 diesel, which costs $55, and a yellow and green reading caboose, which costs $12. These two models have to be my favorites out of all the things I bought, mainly because they're in such great condition and have a few good details. The only bad parts are that the handles on the diesel are about to break off or are just missing, and the caboose's back coupling is broken. Also, another issue I found with the caboose and the diesel is the height difference in the couplers. This makes it very easy for the caboose to be uncoupled from the diesel when it's being pulled along. But other than that, these two are still great models. Let's give them a test run. Next up, here's a model of an E8E9 locomotive made by the Proto 2000 series, which costs $67.95. Now before we unbox the model itself, I'm just gonna go ahead and say the box itself looks really great. It's old, but what makes this packaging look so great is that it has a picture of the locomotive from real life. And then the front flips up to reveal the engine that comes inside. It also gives some brief information on the locomotive from real life, and even the model that it's based on. The most interesting thing about the Pro 2000 series models is that they come in three separate parts. Mainly the motor and chassis, the front pilot, and the main body shell, so you actually have to descend this train after you take it out of the box. And honestly, that's a nice gimmick. Looking at the model itself, it's not half bad and doesn't look like it's been used. And on the front of the locomotive, it even comes with an HO scale crew and has a working headlight. Okay, so I ran into a little bit of a problem. I put the model on the layout and turned on the controller, but it won't run. The model sounds like it's working, but the wheels are rusty and bronze, so I'm gonna need to give this diesel a good cleaning to see if it can run. Bummer. On to the last bit of model trains, here's three of Lionel's HSL Polar Express passenger cars. Mainly the marionette car, a passenger car, and an observation car, all which costs a whopping $189.99. These three cars have got to be some of Lionel's best pieces of rolling stock, as they look very close to the passenger cars from the movie, just like Lionel's normal old gauge Polar Express. They are very detailed and feature all the passengers, marionettes, and the lonely boy. The only flaw I can point out is that the lonely boy in the observation car is placed on the front when he should be all the way at the back of the car. 
burn that little flaw, these cars are still great. Now, at the moment, I currently don't have a model of the Edge of Scale Polar Express, so I'll have to use another engine. Finally, for the last item, here's a new unboxed Tommy James with Curve Track, which cost me $30. This is probably my most favorite model I've purchased. It's mainly because of the fact that it was in a great condition when I found it, and everything about this old toy looks great. Mainly the window revealing to us what character is inside, the old light blue style guide, a picture of a big Tommy Leo on the back, and even a little character bio of the toy itself. This type of toy really brings me back to the old days of Thomas merchandise, compared to the newer merchandise that's being made nowadays. Looking at this Tommy James and even the curve track, they seem to shine the most in quality considering they've never been used. As said before, this really brings me back to the old days of Thomas merch. It's gotta do with the fact 4-Hit Toys Trackmaster, we used to have Tommy's Blue Track as our main battery-powered system of trains, before Trackmaster came along and changed things. It's also gotta do with the fact that I actually used to play with the Blue Track a lot as a kid, before I got older and wanted to switch to model trains, but I still keep the old track with me. Looking at James by himself, he also looks great in quality. He's not that detailed, but he still looks really good. Well anyways guys, that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.